Hey, what's up everybody? It's Alex. I uh, just finished watching the WWDC 2021 event from Apple and uh, took some notes on kind of some of the things that they're talking about and what to expect. I think the, the theme of the event definitely seemed to be sharing. And there's a lot of really big improvements with iOS, uh, Mac OS, iPad OS, watch OS that really do center around sharing not only things like pictures and links and all that kind of stuff with family and friends, but also what you're sharing with Apple themselves and other third party groups. So we'll kind of go over some of the, the key points real quick. I got, I got a bunch of notes I took down. So one of the big things that they focused on in terms of sharing was the ability to share your content in real time with your friends. So that could be you maybe sharing a YouTube video or a Disney Plus show or whatever you might be watching during something like a FaceTime call. And they're opening up FaceTime to be more of a group experience, it looks like. There's a big focus on, on sharing this with groups in actually having everybody join in, whether it be you're on your iPad, your iPhone, um, your Apple TV. And the one that actually surprised me a lot was even Android. They announced that they're gonna be doing a compatibility with Android via a web browser version of FaceTime, which I thought was actually pretty impressive. So how well it'll work, of course, is kind of up, you know, up in the air at the moment. It's still in a beta uh, period, but it was it was an interesting idea. I, I don't have any friends that I think I'd really want to share that, you know, content watching experience with over a phone. But last year showed us maybe a lot of people really needed that. So I think this is a cool, cool idea, and I'm excited to kind of see where that goes. I think the ability to share your screen uh, whether it be you're browsing, they show like a Zillow listing, uh, maybe you're sharing settings and trying to help somebody troubleshoot their phone. I could count a number of times where my, my family member could have maybe used that uh, to have me help them out with, with trying to fix whatever was wrong with their phone. FaceTime's also getting a bunch of improvements as well. Lots of portrait AI stuff built in to make you look a little bit better. There's also some audio engineering stuff that I think is kind of cool as well. Uh, they're, they're trying to make it so that people can have a more realistic experience when you have a large group of people all on a call together. And it's supposed to direct the sound uh, in using spatial audio to kind of imitate where they're at on the screen to make it feel like that's where they're talking from, which I think is, is a cool little thing if they can do it. I mean, it makes that feel a little bit more, um, I can't think of the word. I think it's a cool feature. Can't think of the word though. Messages is also getting a pretty big improvement too. There's a lot of stuff coming with messages in terms of uh, sharing content such as photos. They're, they're making a big push in how you share pictures and how those pictures stay organized with who's actually sharing them and, and what's been shared. They're also putting a big emphasis too on links. And this is something that I, I think would be nice to have where Friends can send you links and then those links can be stored within Apple News app so that if you're too busy to really read something, they showed like a pizza article as an example while you're at work, uh, the, the news app can keep a little category of what's been shared with you so that you can go back later and review those uh, whenever you wish. And I think that's a that's an interesting way to kind of keep everything organized and, and let let the people kind of keep track of what is actually being shared with their friends and, and, you know, not to let people feel like they're being ignored, I guess. Like, yeah, we'll just get to it later. Put it in a little, little section on my other app. I think that's smart. I think it looks really good. Uh, the way it seems to be working uh, with Apple's intention is, is a pretty cool concept. There's also a bunch of changes to the Photos app and kind of what it's sharing with other people, but also your own memories too. So they're, they're kind of pushing this more memory, like look back at this day type thing with integration with Apple Music. So it'll kind of curate a little slideshow of your moments with music that is sort of set to match the tone. And they also mentioned how you can change the tone of those memories. Um, so if you want something a little bit more introspective versus something a little bit more upbeat, 
they're doing that as well, which I thought was a pretty cool thing. I, I don't know how many people will actually end up using it. I, I probably wouldn't be one of those people to use that feature, but it does look cool and it looks like a, a nice integration. You can't share those kind of things on YouTube because you're gonna get copyright strike the second it goes up. But if you're sharing it with family and friends, I mean, that's kind of nice. I, I, I think that would look cool. So yeah, it's a, it's a cool little change. Next up, they talked about uh, a big focus on focus modes. They are trying to push a more mindful approach to how our devices kind of interact with us. Now, I am one of those people who my phone is on silent um, all the time. I, I don't, my phone answers to me. I don't run to it when I need to go pick something up. So I can see this being a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice change to the operating system. It's, it's even set to be customizable to where you can kind of pick what the moment is supposed to be for. And then from there, it'll kind of curate what apps should actually be allowed during those moments. They have one for like work or for coding and all that kind of stuff. And what's cool too is that it's it's also going to focus on the cross compatibility of it all. So if you've got an iPad, an iPhone and a Mac, those modes can be shared across all three of them, which I think is a, is a pretty cool uh, pretty cool feature to have for sure. The camera is also getting some text selection features, which I think can be useful to a lot of people. So you take a photo of a wall of text and you can highlight the text right in the photo directly and then copy, paste it, share it, whatever you gotta do. That that could be pretty useful. I've always been hesitant because Google's had that kind of for a while too and it works to mixed results. So how well it'll actually work with this is kind of up for debate. Uh, big changes to spotlight search. Looks like they're integrating more search results for people as well as like celebrity information, movie information, all that kind of stuff. So that, that was interesting to see. Uh, one of the big ones that I really liked was the fact that the wallet app is now going to integrate uh, a bunch of new car keys, door locks. They had corporate badges that they were advertising on there too. And it also looks like they're going to be working with hotels to bring in hotel keys, which I think is a really interesting idea. But the big one that I've been waiting to see if this would ever become a thing was your driver's license. I would love to be able to just have my ID securely on my phone and that's all I have to carry around. That's like one of the only reasons I carry a wallet. And that's kind of what they said too in their presentation was that this is kind of the last step to getting people to truly ditch a wallet. And I agree, I would love to be able to be one of those people who walks around and just has secure phone locked and IDs already on there. The question is how many states are actually going to start with this? Um, I don't know if Minnesota, that's where I'm at, is gonna be one of them, but I, I, it would be cool to see a little test run of, of how that would work because I, I think that's a really interesting concept. Uh, weather app is also getting updated too, if anybody cares about that. A bunch of new graphics, new animations, so it looks a little bit prettier, so that's that's nice. Maps along with that is also getting a pretty nice facelift from the looks of it for not only this new globe structure that they've built for it, but it also is getting a bigger emphasis on city detail. And they showed San Francisco, which had a lot of nice little, you know, cute, animations for the Golden Gate Bridge and how the differences look with uh, buildings at night versus the day. I think one of the ones that's probably pretty useful is the street markings they showed. So crosswalks and turning lanes all have pretty clear indicators on them themselves. So I think that is a, a more practical change that actually might have some, some cool benefit to it. Uh, they talked about AirPods as well for a brief moment, and AirPods are going to be getting a better, um, a couple of better features for the Find My Blank app. So Find My iPhone, Find My AirPods, all that kind of stuff. It sounds like they're going to be a little bit easier to locate. Another one too that they showed was for people who are hearing impaired. It's going to have a more, uh, a more useful conversation boost when you're wearing AirPods. So it'll try to focus more on people who are talking to you. And hey, if that helps people out who don't quite have hearing aids yet, awesome. That's that's a cool little feature to have and I think it should exist. They also showed a uh, new spatial audio for the Apple AirPod Max. Um, and on top of that too, Dolby Atmos is being integrated into Apple Music. 
So there's a bunch of artists that apparently already have music that works with Dolby Atmos. So that's that's kind of cool. I don't know uh, exactly how much of a difference that makes when I, I don't know, spatial audio with music has always, to me, been kind of a weird experience. Like I have a friend who swears by those 8D audio videos on YouTube and I, I just, I'm not a huge fan of them. But Dolby Atmos um, in a theater where you have you know, however many speakers actually creating that effect versus a virtual version of it. I don't know. I've, I've, I've had it to mixed um, success. So I'm skeptical of that one, but it's cool nonetheless. So interesting little feature. iPad OS got a bunch of uh, nice little updates. So that there's going to be more widgets that you can add directly on your home screen, larger widgets because of a larger interface. And they're bringing over a very classic and timeless Android feature that I'm sure a lot of Android people are going to be like, well, we've had it first, the app drawer. Yes, they finally have what's called their app library, which I don't know why this took them so long to want to do, but to me, that was one of the big things I hated on my iPhone was that you just would have constant pages of apps that would just take up all this room. So the fact that you can now just kind of delete pages, you'll have them all still in an app drawer where it's categorized alphabetically or whatever it might be, I think that's a, a much needed change and it's a change I'm glad to see. So. Congrats, Apple, you did a good job. Multitasking is also getting a little bit easier. There's actually quite a bit of multitasking emphasis put on with the iPad OS 15. Um, it looks nice. It looks very well done. And for somebody who's got a Samsung phone that's it's always had multitasking on it, Apple's done a pretty good job of, of making that actually seem like a easy to use feature. It, it looks pretty seamless. Um, I'm excited to see how many apps actually integrate that. And they have that new shelf feature too, which kind of keeps windows that would come up with apps. I think they showed the email one. You could sort of minimize that window onto a shelf and then access it later. I think you could even take two apps and put them on a shelf by itself and then pull it back up whenever you want to. So multitasking does seem um, pretty fantastic. They also brought up the notes app too in productivity, which apparently is getting a big refresh with a bunch of new features, including the ability to mention people in your notes, which I think is really nice. And the ability to take a quick note, um, on an iPad by just sliding up the bottom of the corner of the screen, writing your notes, swiping it away. And then they're having that sort of continuity across your iPad, your iPhone and your Mac. So that's that's a nice little productivity feature that I think a lot of people might actually use quite a bit. Some changes to translate as well. There's going to be more languages and it's going to be a system wide translate feature. So if you use that, that's going to get better, too. They're also introducing something called the Swift Playground, which is intended to help people learn how to code iPad apps on an iPad. Uh, it's kind of like baby's first app. So it's supposed to walk you through from a beginner standpoint all the way to advance on how to write in Swift. And uh, I don't know anything about coding, really. I tried my hand at it, and I'm not very good at it. They made it seem like it was a piece of cake, so that's kind of cool. I think the more you can put in people's hands to give them the tools to create stuff, awesome. Go for it. That's, that's a sweet little thing to have, and it looks like it might even be kind of fun. Privacy was also a pretty big point of emphasis, too. With uh, this year's WWDC, they're talking a lot about how mail is going to be updated to prevent third parties from tracking you when you open your email, which I didn't even know was a thing. Uh, Safari got a bunch of improvements too to encrypt your information so that you, even Apple doesn't know what site you've gone to as well. So that was kind of sweet. App Privacy Report also is going to show you a bunch of things about what app is sending like that app itself where is it sending data to it'll tell you exactly the third-party domains that are sending that information um siri got a big one too which is the on device dictation or uh, on device speech recognition i should say which is i didn't i didn't really even know that wasn't a thing yet i guess i kind of assumed it was but i guess it makes sense but now on Siri, it'll all there will be a lot of stuff that is just done locally on the chip rather than being sent over to a server. So not only is that better for privacy if you're worried about like recordings being shared with Apple, 
but it also just inherently speeds things up. All that is done locally on the device. It doesn't have to go over a network. So they showed, you know, commands are a lot faster. You can do them in quick succession. Um, nice change. I, I, I thought Siri was already like that, but hey, I, I learned something today. So I don't have an iPhone, so you have to forgive me. iCloud also got a, a couple nice updates. One of them that I thought was interesting was that the account recovery method, and now you can include a family member to help you out if you get locked out of your account. They can sort of answer a call to basically give you a code to get back in, which is nice. But the one that I thought was really cool, and this only comes from uh, my, pre, my, my work background, is the digital legacy feature. So digital legacy is intended to, if you pass away, um, help transition the data from your device that would normally be locked to a family member or somebody you trust. That is honestly a really big thing that I've seen a lot of family members struggle with. Um, and it can cause a ton of headaches, you know, just because Apple can't just give you a password. But this is, I think, a really good alternative to doing that. And uh, I'm, I, 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 it's kind of morbid, but I guess I'm excited to see that help people out. <laughs> it feels weird saying like that, but that's just the way I look at it. I think it's a really smart and useful feature for sure iCloud Plus has also been introduced, which is gonna have a couple new things for private privacy relay included as a feature with that. Uh, so it's, it's included with anybody's existing subscription to iCloud, but privacy relay essentially double encrypts your data so nobody knows who's going to what website, it's only you. And then on top of that, one that I thought was pretty smart is the ability for them to create a custom random email address anytime you're filling out a form that forwards that email to your own inbox uh, and you can just delete it whenever you want to. I think that's really smart if you don't wanna give out all these sites your personal email, that's a cool feature. I, I, I like to see that kind of stuff, that's smart. Uh, HomeKit also got a bunch of new updates too. There's a bunch of new you know, integrations with Siri and the new sharing with you app too. So if you're interested in HomeKit, there's a whole bunch of stuff out there on that. I don't have any of that HomeKit stuff, so I didn't really see any of it. Uh, Health got a bun bunch of really important updates, I think. The one that was really cool, I think, was first they talked about the ability to kind of track how you walk and then predict if you're having any changes in your habit that could cause you to fall. So that's aimed at maybe the older demographic of people, but uh, I'm sure everybody here has a family member who's had a bad fall and hey, if, if a watch or an iPhone can kind of help say, hey, this is, this is something you probably need to look out for, uh, that's, that's really cool. So that was an interesting one. They also talked about uh, lab results for people who have you know high cholesterol or whatever it might be, can get transmitted to the health app and then they explain it in pretty basic English for you to understand, uh, which I, I don't have any use for that at the moment, but I can see how that would be super beneficial for a lot of people too. So that was a cool update. They also talk about trends, so they can kind of tell you like, hey, based on your trends, this is where you're at with uh, steps and maybe your heart rate, your resting heart rate. Even the sleep tracking is getting the ability to track your breathing during sleep, which I thought was really cool. And they can tell you if you've uh, if they've noticed any negative trends and they can kind of tell you what might be causing that. So yeah, health app got a really, really big update. Uh, the last part on the health app that I thought was really interesting was the family trends. So if you've got a family, mom and dad, grandma, grandpa, whatever, uh, you can all opt in to share health information with one another, and that could be really useful, especially if you've got people who are a little bit older in your family. Um, it'll tell you like, hey, we've noticed a difference in mom's walk or her heart rate or something, and it'll tend to sell you, ah, it'll tell you um, via an alert on your phone that that's happening, and it'll tell you right away, hey, maybe you should call your mom. So that's a, that's a cool little feature. WatchOS got a bunch of updates too. They're talking a little bit more about the mindfulness portion of WatchOS. So, you know, information about like the breathing exercises, the meditation exercises, all that kind of stuff was pretty cool. They're also talking about the reflect mode, which just kind of gives you a little chance to be like, hey, think of something that you really like about your life and why does it make you happy? 
It's a cool little thing to do. They also talked about new workouts being introduced on there. The Fitness Plus has got some new trainer on there as well. Um, and new music based workouts that have like curated lists for, for different types of artists and working out. So that's, that's neat. They're introducing a new portraits watch face, which, which looks pretty cool. They're going to have a bunch of new updates for how you can message on an Apple watch, how you can share on an Apple watch, the Google photos app or Google photos, the Apple photos app got completely redesigned for the Apple watch. And it looks, um, it looks a lot more useful to me. Um, on top of that, Mac OS is getting a new version. They're calling it, uh, Mo Monterey, Mac OS Monterey. And it's a lot of the same information. You got a lot of the sharing tools built in a lot of the quick notes continuity built in. The one that I thought was really cool was called universal control. So that allows you, if you have a MacBook, let's say you can use the keyboard and mouse on that MacBook to control your iPad. And you can even use it with like your Mac too. So if you've got like an iMac, um, I, I, I think that's really cool. It apparently works with more than one device or more than two devices. Um, so that is a really interesting feature and it's just kind of seamlessly built in. I think they do that kind of stuff really, really well. And that one got my attention because it also works with the file sharing. You can just drag and drop from your Mac to your iPad vice versa. I think that's a really, really useful feature. Uh, they're also integrating AirPlay to a Mac. So if you have an iMac, you could AirPlay from your iPhone to it directly, share content, share some music, use the iMac as a speaker system, essentially. Pretty smart. Um, they're also talked about shortcuts. Safari got a big redesign. And all of this is coming in a public beta that'll be available in July at some point. And then the full release is scheduled for sometime this fall. So we didn't get any announcement about, uh, you know, a new Mac book OS onto an iPad or anything like that. Nothing I was hoping for, but nevertheless, a lot of cool things. So for those of you who haven't uh, seen my channel before, I'm more of a PC guy, more of an iPhone, you know, don't really have one of those. Uh, I usually have an Android phone. In fact, the last iPhone that I've used was an iPhone 6. Um, not even a 6S, just an iPhone 6. So haven't had an iPhone in, in quite some time now. But uh, I think all these changes are really cool. I really, you know, I, I think iOS is heading in a, in a direction that I personally like a little bit more. Um, it has some similarities with Android that I think are, are pretty useful. But yeah, let me know what you think uh, in the comments below. Hopefully this was helpful if you didn't want to watch the whole hour and a half long presentation. Other than that, folks, if you liked it, maybe leave a like. That helps a lot. Tell me in the comments below what your favorite part was or something that you didn't like very much about the WWDC event. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get out of here and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.